So good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this evening's information session on the Youth Employment Preparation Program. We're very happy to have you here this evening. Uh, we have a lot of exciting new changes uh, that have happened with the program this year, and we're very excited to have so many amazing students that are going to be joining us for the first time this year, and also a lot of amazing returning students. So thank you for making time uh, to come this evening. For those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Christine Breton, and I am the Employment Education and Training Coordinator for Military Family Services Europe. Um, I was working in the virtual role before, and then some of you I've corresponded with because I came in right at the tail end of um, when you uh, were in your placements. So for those of you I haven't met, um, I look forward to meeting you soon. And for returning students, it's nice to have you. Um, a little bit of background so you know. Um, for myself, um, I'm working here, of course, in this position as a coordinator. My educational background is I have a master's in leadership. And back in Canada, before we came to Europe, I was working in my own business as a training and development consultant. So I'm very passionate about helping individuals and organizations achieve their full potential and develop um, as human beings. So I'm very excited to have, be working with you this year and have this opportunity. Um, I'm also a military spouse and a parent to two OutCam children. And this is our fourth OutCam hosting. So I'm uh, ready, ready and willing to help you with all sorts of questions you might have about the program and. Uh, to support you because it is a unique opportunity to be here in Europe um, as an outcan youth and to be looking for ways to develop yourself during this time. So we're very pleased to have you here. Uh, I'm going to go forward now and I'm going to share my screen with you and we're gonna move forward through our presentation. So um, what we're going to talk about this evening, we're gonna go through our agenda here first. We're gonna go over the aim of the program, um, of the YEP program. We're going to speak a little bit about the eligibility, uh, the application process, the security paperwork uh, that you're going to need to do to achieve your security clearance for those who are first year students, the YEP program timeline, the program structure, as well as our performance management framework. And at the end, as I mentioned before, we're going to have time for questions and answers. The now the aim of the youth employment program is twofold. So first is to facilitate reunification between university students in Canada and Canadian Armed Forces members and support personnel posted in Europe. So as you'll know, if you've been a part of the program before, we do have students who come from Canada, their parents are posted here or a parent, and then they're coming back and getting work in the summer, but really being able to come back and be with their family. So that's part of our aim of this program. But the secondary aim is to provide both these university students as well as OutCan high school students with the opportunity to engage in meaningful work placements. Um, and that's really important because what our goal is, is for you to develop both in a personal manner, but also in a professional manner so that you're growing as a human being and you're also growing as a young working professional. Um, and this part we've really tried to work on for this new season to really look at what is it that you really need to do to develop as a professional in this new reality that they have. Life is always changing, the world is changing, and we really want to be there to prepare you for the workforce, but also for life. Um, for those of you who are new to this program, the YEP program is run by Military Family Services Europe, uh, which is a division of Canadian Forces Morale and Welfare Services. So if you see CFMWS anywhere, that's what that's referring to. And then for Military Family Services Europe, it's MFSE. So for the program eligibility, um, it is on our website, but we're gonna go through this just to make sure that everybody um, has the opportunity to ask questions. So the first thing is that the person must be a dependent of a Canadian Armed Forces member or a Canadian Forces sponsored support personnel who's stationed in Europe. The applicant cannot be a diplomatic dependent, so CDA, Canadian Defense Attaché, or MPSS, the military police. The applicant is a Canadian citizen, does not have dual citizenship in the country of employment, and does not have dual citizenship in a non-NATO country. 
So for example, if you are posted to Germany and you have dual citizenship in Germany, you would not be eligible to participate in the program. The applicant has to be a dependent in the view of the CAF, therefore eligible for NATO, NATO SOFA status. And that's SOFA, if you're not familiar with that, that's the status, status of forces agreement. And so you would have a stamp in your passport. Um, for the ages, so the applicant needs to be between the ages of 15 to 21. It's important to note that the student would need to be 16 by the time uh, that their work placement begins. Uh, so work placements range from, we'll talk about this in more detail, from May till August. But if you're a high school student and you're turning 16, say, at the end of June, that's still fine because you could look to do a placement in July or in August. So, and for students, they're only able to work up until their 21st birthday. Um, for students who are residing in Belgium, there are special rules here. So they're only able to work up until their 18th birthday uh, if they are in Belgium. And this is very important. The applicant has to be enrolled in full-time studies for the school year 2024-25, and they need to be planning to return to full-time studies for the school year of 2025-26. Um, so this can be in Canada, abroad, or by distance. Um, so for example, if you are graduating this year and you're planning on attending university, but you haven't been accepted into university for the coming year and you're in the program, that's fine, but you need to have the intent to be a full-time student. So there's a lot of obviously regulations here, but if you are still unclear about your eligibility, you need to verify the regulations for your host nation because we have a lot of countries that we deal with here in the program, it's important that you can either reach out to your local orderly room or you can reach out to the contact at your Canadian embassy within your host nation. And if you're not sure who your contact would be, generally it would be the person that you dealt with at the embassy when you were posted in. And if you're still unsure, you can check with the local orderly room. So for the application process, we're very happy to let you know that it's going to be a lot easier this year. Uh, we are going with a paperless application process. So the application is opening tomorrow on the 24th of October. So for this year, um, there are three steps. It's very simple. You'll go to the YEP program page. So the address is below, but when you receive a copy of this presentation, there'll be an embedded link that you can click. Once you get to the website, you'll see a very clear button that says register now. You click that button and you're going to be redirected to a Microsoft form and it'll be the 2024-25 YEP program registration form. The form is bilingual and you can go through and complete that and submit it and then we will contact you um, once you have submitted the application. So the deadline to register, it's the same as last year, deadline to register will be the 30th of November 2024. Security clearance paperwork. Anyone who's been in the program before knows that this is maybe uh, not the most fun part of being in the program, but a very important part. Um, in order to participate in the YEP program, you are required to obtain your security clearance. Students are responsible for submitting all of the paperwork to the YEP program coordinator, that's me, by the assigned due date. Imagine that's underlined there to ensure that the Human Resources Department has adequate time to get your file ready so that you can have your security clearance certificate prior to the start of the work placement. Um, so a few things that you can do to make sure that you are prepared. Uh, you need to make sure that you have your social insurance number and your birth certificate prior to applying for the program because those are both required as part of the um, paperwork. So it is definitely, there are other things that you will need as part of it, but those are two of the things sometimes people may not have it on they need to organize ahead of time. Please note that the security clearance certificates are valid for 10 years. So if you're a student who is in uh, returning in year two, three, or four, you don't have to go through and complete that paperwork again because you will already have that certificate. Um, and if you are unsure, if you don't have a copy of it or you've lost that, you can always contact me and let me know and we can get that from HR. 
Um, so I will be sending out once people are registered the information so they can begin that process. But again, we really want to highlight it's very important that the students prepare and have these documents and submit them. So in addition to the social insurance number, the birth certificate, there'll be a list of forms that they're going to need to complete as well as the last five years of their addresses. So please be prepared to, you might need to support and help them as they go through because depending on their age, that might not be information that they have at their disposal readily. So for our timeline for the employment program, it's going to be similar to how it has been in past years. Um, so right now, if you look at the timeline in October, we're, we've been working on the planning here and then the info session. For the month of November, it's only going to be the registration process. Student training will begin and it will run from December through till March. And then there'll be an overlapping application process from March to May, the work placement from May to August and then the evaluation in August and September. So for the majority of students um, who are in university, um, they would be the only ones that would be starting earlier in May. Students that are in high school obviously would be working uh, more in the July, August timeframe. All of the placements will stop by the end of August, by the 30th of August. Um, but obviously, because it does take some time with the paperwork and the evaluations, those will run a little bit into September. Um, so when we're looking at this, I know some students who are new to the program might be thinking, okay, well, there's December, I've got holidays, or there's other things going on. Um, there will be obviously the training that we'll discuss a little bit later that will be going on for those four months, but it will be flexible for you to work around your school schedule and your other commitments as well. And if something does come up where you're going to be away or something's going on, we can definitely um, work with that and assist you. It's the same for during the work placement time. People will obviously have vacations and other things that happen. And we want to help you be successful in your placement and also uh, help you be successful at having a good summer and enjoying time with your family while you're together. So um, don't, uh, don't worry too much about that, but just so you have an understanding of the general flow of the program. So there are four distinct sections of the program. There's the student training, the job application process, the work placement, and the evaluation. We're going to talk about each of those in more detail. We're going to go through and we're going to talk a little bit about the program reporting structure because this is something that is a little bit new for students who are coming in for the first time who may not have worked in an organization before. And also we'd like to clarify it for students who are returning. Um, it's a bit of a unique like situation with the students. The YEP students when they come are going to have two people that they are reporting to during the course of the year. Um, so in the dark blue here, the YEP program coordinator, that's me. Um, you're gonna be reporting directly to me for the duration of your participation in the YEP program. So when we're doing the training, you're gonna be submitting everything to me during your application process. That's all gonna come directly through me. Um, you're going to have a secondary reporting duty to the YEP supervisor during the course of your work placement. But while you're working with that YEP supervisor, who's the employer, you're still going to be working with me at the same time. So you'll have two people that are contacting you that you're going to be needing to email, um, back and forth with me, letting me know how things are going with your placement, as well as working day to day with your supervisor in person, or for some people, they'll be working remotely. Uh, the YEP program coordinator, that's me, and the YEP supervisor, we're going to actively collaborate in the supervision of the YEP students. So we're going to be talking back and forth. So what we're looking to do this year is really provide more support for the student. Um, if we're asking you to develop as an individual and as a professional, we need to be able to be providing you with the appropriate support and tools to facilitate your growth. So these are the, the two individuals that you're going to be working with all the time. So you will be working more closely with me than maybe you had if you were a student in prior years. So as we move through now, we're going to talk about the four different sections of the program. So the student training, as it was identified before um, on the time frame, it's from December till March. So the YEP students will participate in virtual group training as well as self-directed training based on your experience and your YEP program level. All of the training must be completed in order to move to the next phase of the program. So all of the training is mandatory. 
So this year we've changed it and we have some additional training. Um, for those of you who have been here before, you will recognize some of the training. Um, but we are going to have a lot more that are developing on soft skills. So things like understanding and awareness of self and others, giving and receiving feedback effectively, navigating conflict. And then we'll have the development of skills required for successfully applying and obtaining a job placement. So things that you would be familiar with if you were here last year, working on resumes, cover letter writing, interview techniques, etc. So we're really looking at enhancing and making it a far more holistic training for you to really be able to prepare you for success. So as I mentioned before, the assignments must be completed and submitted in a timely manner. Uh, if there is a failure to complete and submit assignments, which I hope there won't be, um, it could result in an end to the program participation. So when we're looking at the application process, again, this is referring to the job application process. The timeline is going to be from March until May. And again, that will vary based on if the student is a high school student or their university student. Uh, the young job advertisements are going to be released and the students will research various job opportunities and they will apply based on their suitability. There will be panel interviews that are conducted and then the successful candidate will be offered a placement. It's a mandatory process for students to complete and submit all program assignments in order to move forward. So we're highlighting that again. And it's important for people to know, especially if you're new to this process and to this program this year, you are going to be participating in a real job competition. It'll be part of a CFMWS job application and screening process, and all applicants must compete for jobs. Um, we like to put the caveat in there that there is no guarantee of employment, but our intention is that all students would be able to, um, to gain employment through the program. But it is important to note that because, um, and we'll talk about this in a bit, but because the job placements, um, it's all based on the jobs that we have available, the budget for the year, um, what the needs of the employer are. There's only specific positions that we'll have available. So you might find that you and another person are both competing for the same job, but the goal is that the person who is best suited to the job will be working in that placement. So it is a really good opportunity for the students because that is obviously how it works when you're, um, you're in the, um, the job market applying for a job outside of this program. So there will be positions available across Europe in various locations, including a limited number of remote positions. So when we're talking about the YET program work placement, Again, the timeline is from May to August. Students will be participating in a work placement ranging from four to eight weeks. Placement lengths are calculated based on the student's experience and the YEP program level, the annual budget, and the employer's needs. So when people are looking at the different placements, it will have the, um, the number of weeks. And again, there's a conversation about number of weeks versus hours, and we'll talk about that after. Um, but that will be advertised, so you'll know when you're looking at what jobs you are suited for and then how that will work with um, your summer and your uh, schooling break. So as we talked before at the beginning of the presentation, one of the aims of the YEP program is to provide university students and OutCan high school students with the opportunity to engage in meaningful work placements and to grow personally and professionally. So it's really important, and this is why I'm highlighting it, that the students understand the nature of the work placement and they're prepared and willing to grow and develop as young professionals. Um, and that's something we're really looking to focus more on this year to really provide additional training and additional support to really help students to grow and be successful in the workplace and feel that they are leaving their placement having had a meaningful work experience, but also having had a meaningful growth experience. So as I've mentioned already, the length of the job placement and the total number of hours will be outlined on the job poster. The specific working hours within the placement, that will be agreed upon between the YEP student and the YEP supervisor, and it will be communicated to myself, the YEP coordinator. So if you have certain requirements based on other commitments you have, uh, you can speak with your supervisor about that, and that would be something that you decide there. But you'll know in advance when you're applying the a rough amount of hours that you would be working. 
So as I mentioned before, when we were looking at the timeline, you're definitely permitted to take unpaid vacation during the work placement. The important piece is that it has been approved well, by the YEP supervisor, and it's been clearly communicated in advance to myself, the YEP coordinator. Um, so that's uh, obviously we know people who are coming back and this is a reunification uh, program. We want students to be able to come back from university and see their families. So our goal is that they're able to have meaningful time with their families. So absolutely you can take um, unpaid vacation time and that is not an issue. You just need to communicate that and negotiate the dates with your supervisor. So for the YEP evaluation, it's going to happen uh, between August to September. I, ideally, you know, at the, in August, if everyone uh, can have it done by then. Uh, but the evaluation is essential for the student and program development. So the YEP students and their supervisors will complete performance and program evaluations at the mid and end point of their placement. Um, so for students who are completing a four-week placement at week two and four, if you're in a longer placement, um, you know, obviously at week four and eight. Um, so we really believe that the giving and receiving of feedback is essential for a successful work placement. Um, so in the training part, students will have had uh, engaged in learning and skill development in this area prior to their placements. Uh, so this is really important because feedback is a regular part of being in a real job outside of this program. It's essential that you're able to evaluate your own performance and how you're doing, but it's also essential that you're able to receive feedback well from the person who's supervising you uh, in order to either understand that what you're doing is working well or maybe receive feedback to understand how you need to modify your approach and do things differently. Um, but that obviously isn't a skill that comes to everybody naturally. So we're really looking to support you in this and provide you with some training around that and then have this work placement be an opportunity for you to be in a quote unquote safe environment where you can have some trial and error about self-evaluating and receiving feedback. So that's going to be a far greater portion um, this year than it was last year, both the training and also what we're expecting the students to do. So there'll be two different types of feedback and we'll be going into this in detail during the training period, but students will be expected to have informal feedback. So that might be an in-person conversation for people working remotely, maybe a video call and also their formal feedback. So that would be the midpoint evaluation and the final evaluation. So, and as I already mentioned to you before, the midpoint evaluations are halfway through. The reason that they're halfway through is so that if there's any issues that have come up, maybe from the student's perspective or the supervisor's perspective, that those can be identified. And if for some reason it's something that the student's not comfortable addressing directly, then I'm there to support them and I can work and we can collaborate together to figure out um, how we're going to move forward. For the formal evaluations, those are confidential and they're only viewed by myself as the YEP coordinator. Um, and uh, if there's any issues, as I said, I'll be there to support and help, whether that's from the supervisor's perspective or the student's perspective. So that's why we showed before, looking at the um, our little mini org chart that we're working together as a team. So, and as, well, as I mentioned already, the informal feedback and formal evaluations, we take that information seriously. We collected that before. We take that information and we use it to further develop the YEP program. So that's another reason why it's so important for students to voice their opinion and share feedback on the program, because we care what your experience is in the program and we want to make it better every year. One new part that we're very excited about um, for this year that's new is we're moving forward with um, a YEP program performance management framework. And we haven't done this in the past, but we're really excited to move forward with this year. Um, and it's based upon the foundations of the performance management framework within CFMWS. And then we have uh, made some minor changes because obviously the situation is different because these are shortened work placements um, as opposed to the performance management that we're dealing with organization wide occurs over the course of the year. So the guiding principles um, for the performance management framework uh, is that it's employee centered, continuous, meaningful, and value. So we'll go through those. So for employee centered, I am the center of my performance and it starts with me. Um, so this is something that we will talk about when it comes to student accountability. Um, and it's really important for the student to understand that and to take ownership of the experience that they have within their work placement. And this 
this is important to, uh, in inside of work and outside of work, as all parents know. So um, we're excited to be able to move forward with it. Um, looking at continuous, my performance is a continuum. This is another really important piece for the students to understand that, you know, coming here and doing a placement, we're not going to be static. Um, we're not going to stay the same as we go through the placement. As we talked about, the idea is that we're going to learn and grow and develop. So we definitely don't expect students, whether they're coming in and starting their placement at 16 or if they're 20 years old, we don't expect them to come in and know everything. It's an opportunity for them to learn. Um, so we do expect that the performance they will learn and they will continue and they will grow. So for meaningful, uh, my performance is the foundation for my growth and development. So the same, the same we're giving you the same messages again. We really want, um, want students to have a meaningful experience here during this placement and to feel that they are having uh, a growth and development experience as a young professional. And for value, uh, my performance reflects the contributions that I bring. And that's really important. Um, we want to make sure that the student can bring value to the organization and to their placement and that they can really gain a sense of pride that the work they have done has been meaningful. So the objective of providing the YEP program performance management framework is to manage performance and to drive performance results. For the policy, it is the policy of CFMWS to plan, review, and evaluate the performance of employees, to define expectations through goal setting, to maintain and or improve performance, and to support their development and recognize their contributions. So obviously when students are coming and they're in shorter work placements, it's not going to be as in depth as it would be, um, but our goal is still to, be do, can, to do these actions with the students, to have the students be a part of this because that is a part of being an individual in an organization to have them learn these skills. So the foundation um, that we're gonna be looking to is our shared competencies as an organization. So they're the foundation of any aspect of talent management and these behaviors under each of the competencies, they represent the requirements for employees and they'll be used to evaluate performance and support employee development. So we won't go through all of the competencies, but as I said, you will have this presentation at the end. So you'll be able to read through them um, as a student or if your parents are interested in reading through, but these are our CFMWS shared competencies. And so when we're working in the training period, students, we will go through and have a session where we're looking at the competencies and where we're looking at a safer client focus, what would be the type of behaviors that they would be demonstrating that would be appropriate to that level that they're at um, within the organization. So this will be a great way for the student to start thinking about what they're doing on the job and also looking at how they're performing. So as I mentioned before, feedback is very important. So again, you know, it's the student, the supervisor and the coordinator. We, so I've provided the diagram so they can understand, especially for the students. If you look at where, you know, on the Venn diagram, we're all connected here. There's gonna be feedback going between uh, the student and the program coordinator, both program feedback, the student is gonna provide to me. And then we're gonna be sharing feedback back and forth between one another on the student's performance. So they're gonna be providing your self-evaluation, myself providing them with feedback. And again, that can be a conversation that we're having um, you know, at any time, or if the student wants to reach out and is looking for a little bit of coaching on something that they're struggling with, I'm gonna be there to support them and help them with that. There's also going to be uh, between the YEP student and the YEP supervisor, there'll be continual feedback on student performance, both informal and formal, as we've mentioned. And then the YEP supervisor and myself as a program coordinator, I'm gonna be receiving program feedback from the supervisor, but we are going to be discussing the student's performance and looking at how we can support that student in their growth and development. So it is really important going forward that you're understanding that this is going to be a normal positive part of your experience to really be looking at what you're doing, how that's working and what you need to do to keep moving forward. So a really big part of the program is student ownership and accountability. So when we're talking about student ownership, uh, the student, uh, the YEP student is taking the initiative and responsibility for their growth and success during the participation in the YEP program. 
that's really important because you know having that ownership in that is going to really drive drive them to improve. And for student accountability, when we're speaking about that, it's the student being responsible for the assignments and tasks that would be in the training portion with me and all of the tasks and activities that would be assigned to them throughout the YET program. So that's a really, really big part of it because for a lot of these students, especially if you're coming in and you haven't worked in a workplace before, you know, you are going to be going to school. You won't have, it's not going to be an overwhelming workload, but you are going to have other additional assignments that you are going to need to do as part of the program. And then in the summer, you are obviously going to be going to work and having assignments and different things that you need to do. And it's really important that the student is accountable for that because it is a real job placement where you're getting paid and the people that you're working for in the organization, either internal to CFMWS or external, they're relying on you as a member of the team. So ownership and accountability is really a, a central part of the program. So on that note, um, people might be wondering, especially if they're new to the program, what is the role of the parent? Um, so parental support and encouragement is a really important part of the YET process. And we really encourage parents to be there and, you know, provide that support for the student. Um, however, it's really important that the student navigates the YET program administration, assignments, tasks, and activities independently. Um, I know myself as a parent, you want to be able to help your children and do things. And some of this might be a challenge, um, you know, learning how to administratively manage the things that are assigned to you can be challenging. And that is a learned skill. It's not something that comes naturally to everybody. So it's important to empower them to take that on by themselves. So all of the correspondence for the program is gonna be directly between the student and myself or the student and the YEP supervisor. Um, nothing will be emailed to the parent. The only time that I would be contacting the parent, and I hope that this doesn't happen, but would be if the student just, you know, doesn't show up, is not responding, and then I would need to go to the contact file and contact the parent to make sure, A, that the student is okay, and B, if they are still planning on remaining in the program. Um, so we really do ask the parents to um, support, encourage, be there, be a cheerleader for them, uh, maybe provide some sage words of advice but really allow them to manage that process themselves. So on the piece of the ownership and accountability, um, we want the students, again, we talked before about it being a continuum, um, their performance, but we want them to understand, and so we've got the cycle here on the student ownership and accountability. So if we're starting in the, in the top there on the right, it really starts with the willingness to learn and grow, which is what we've identified at the beginning. Students who are participating in the program need to be open to learn and grow as human beings and as working professionals. Um, part of that is understanding the expectations. So there will be enhanced job descriptions that are provided for them when they are applying for job positions. Um, there is also going to be very clear expectations that are laid out throughout the training period about what is going to be required of them. We're going to be looking for the students to be goal setting both in the training period and also in the work placement. Um, so looking at what they're needing to achieve uh, and also goal setting for themselves personally, really looking to say, okay, here's where I'm at today. What are some things that I think would be beneficial for me to grow and develop in? Um, we were looking for them to really engage in critical thinking and organizational skills. So once they see the tasks that are set out ahead of them, really being able to develop the ability to not always look to the supervisor, obviously they're there for support, but if they've had that conversation, being able to look at a list of tasks and to critically think about that and then organize themselves uh, and how they're going to approach those tasks because that's a really important part of being able to be um, in working independently. Um, again, working on the student being able to come up with a plan of action, learning how to understand what they need to do and how they're going to carry that out. Moving through to their performance, the actual carrying out of the tasks that they need to do. And then following that, really moving to the reflection and evaluation stage where the student is able to say, okay, this was, you know, the project that I carried out or here are the tasks that I carried out for today. Looking and evaluating how they think they did on that. And then for the feedback and development piece, that's that piece where they're going back and they're working with their supervisor or maybe in the, you know, if it's during the training period, maybe they're working with me and we're having a conversation and they're receiving feedback 
um, from the supervisor or coordinator, and then they're making adjustments and they're growing as an individual and they're developing. And then we're gonna start the cycle all over again. So we've tried to really develop this so that the students can have a visual so they understand what this process is when they're taking ownership and accountability. What does that look like in action as they're moving through the program? But also for them to understand that we're going to be there at every point of the way to support them. We're not asking them to do all of this independently. We're asking them to really take a central role, uh, but within a supportive environment. So that is the overview of our program for this year. And at the bottom, I have the YET program page. Again, it's got an embedded link for you to go there, but I've also provided you with my um, email address. So please feel free. We obviously have time for questions tonight, but if you want to um, email me with other detailed questions that you're not comfortable asking tonight, please feel free to contact me. Or if you'd like to book um, a time where we can meet and have a call. I'm also help, have, happy to do that with you if you feel like you need a bit more opportunity to discuss the program one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, then thank you so much um, for coming to the meeting. And uh, the link should be live if you're interested in registering tonight. Otherwise, um, it officially opens tomorrow, but again, between 11 and three, the website will be down for maintenance, but um, for Berlin time, but otherwise, Please feel free to go on there. And if you have questions or you want to connect and speak in more detail, I'd be happy to do that as well with you. Hey, thanks very much, everybody. Have a nice evening.